Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. I don't know when this video will make its way to the YouTube channel because I am so far behind on videos I don't know which ends up. It may be a month or more or it might only be a few days because I never know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> but we've got a uh, real challenge on our hands today. <laughs> the uh, it, Today is uh, July 25th. I believe that's a Tuesday. 2017, by the way, because who knows how long the video will be out there. Take a look at this. This is just how it came in. Just hearts everywhere. It's a Gibson Master Tone banjo, and it is in pieces. Brand new head here, which has never been installed. Hopefully it will fit. Uh, all the hardware here for holding everything down and the tailpiece and the armrest and here's a piece that's loose and some strings and a neck. You can see the pattern there and I don't know the names of all these patterns. I think this is hearts and flowers. I'm not really sure. But uh, I don't know. I don't claim to be an expert in any of that kind of thing. This is uh, the resonator back here got quite a note. I've covered up the contact information here, so let's see what his note says. I have not read this yet. <clears throat> I'm just reading the way it's written here and I don't quite understand it. I have severe arthritis. Possible I would like a wood tone ring and or aluminum and or carbon fiber to lower the weight. So in other words, the weight is the issue. If you please, I would like all the wood and metal buffed out and polished. I notice wear marks on the first two frets. Overall, I would like a lower action set up without buzz possible, without buzzing. Truss rod adjustment, tuning peg greased, polished buffed whole instrument, new tone ring lighter, Reassembly, fret dressing, etc. Put back together, assembled. If the bridge I sent to you won't work, put on whatever you recommend. On the tone ring, would you be able to give me a quote before you start? Well, for those of you who don't know a lot about five string banjos, this would be your tone ring. It's been uh, chromed, but it's a heavy brass ring. It's, it is very heavy. I would, and I'm just guessing, well, why guess? Let's see here, we've got a scale right here. Let me just turn it on and maybe we'll get an idea of how much this thing weighs. 52.7 ounces. In grams, that is 1,494 grams. So it's, you know, it's, it's heavy. The thing about most tone rings is most people want heavier rather than lighter. It gives the instrument more sustain, more punch. So, you know, yes, can we do something like this? I'm sure we can. I mean, potentially I could even make one of these out of aluminum would be a real nightmare. I would I'd probably have to charge way more than you could buy one for because of all the time invested. It would just take forever. I, and you'd have to start with a really thick piece of large aluminum and uh, go from there. But, uh, I mean, I probably could machine one out. And who knows? Maybe that's what we'll have to do because, uh, you know, this is a pretty uh, tall order for a short cook, I think. <laughs> You know, it, the trick is finding one of these that's going to match. And, and I'm assuming because it's a Gibson, that won't be too hard. But then, I've assumed before and been wrong. So, here we go. We're going to start on the adventure. First thing is, we can't go anywhere until we get this figured out. I might add that one of the things I see wrong with banjos a lot is the intonation. Now, intonation, as we know, is more or less your fret scale. Uh, that's really what it amounts to. It does your bridge and your saddle and your nut and all that work with your fret scale, the way the frets are cut in the fretboard. Well, I'm curious. I have never messed with one of these moon 
bridge as much. I've seen them many times. I know a lot of guys put them on and just swear by them. But I'll be real curious if that works perfectly with the intonation. So stay tuned for that. I have searched all over eBay and Googled and everything for an aluminum tone ring. The only one I find is a Danik tone ring. And it never actually says it's aluminum, but I've seen on banjo forums that they say it's aluminum, which is on the screen over there. And guess what? It costs over a thousand dollars just for the tone ring. Okay, well, that's a lot of money. I look for a block of aluminum so that I could machine my own. Guess what that costs? Almost 300 bucks just for the block of aluminum. Okay, and it was just barely big enough to make one. It was almost the perfect size to make one, as a matter of fact. 300 bucks. Of course, you're going to have tons of waste in that because it's a big square block and you're going to cut a circle out of it with a hole in it. So, anyway, and machine that. And that would be hard to do anyway. So, you know, I could see why the one aluminum tone ring costs $1,000 because... You're going to have a lot of time in it. You're going to have all that money just in the material. So the only other aluminum tone ring that I know of personally is this one right here. So where did this come from? Well, it's kind of a funny story. People over the years have given me banjo parts. Now, I don't recall people giving me guitar parts, really, to speak of, or fiddle parts. Well, maybe a little bit of fiddle parts. But hardly any other kind of instrument parts other than banjo parts. People gave me a neck, they gave me resonators, they gave me tone rings, they gave me all these different banjo parts. And they said, do you need these parts? And I go, no, I don't really need them, but I'll take them because you never know, they might come in handy someday. Well, after, you know, 10 or 15 years of that, one day I was in my shop and I thought, you know what, I think I have enough parts to actually make a banjo. So in literally one afternoon, I made this. <laughs> I just made it all fit up, you know, and it worked. It, you know, I had to grind the neck down. I never even bothered finishing it. I just ground the neck down to fit the slot, you know. I didn't care. I just thought, I'm going to see what happens if I have a banjo. Well, it just so happens, this banjo has a has an aluminum tone ring. Now, I don't know if it was an old Fender or what it was. I imagine there's plenty of aluminum tone rings out there. I just don't happen to have access to them. Here's what this one sounds like. Now, I, I don't play a banjo at all. I have a flat pick here, so. Run, I hear banjo music. <laughs> I don't. You know, it, it's just a neat little banjo. I mean, it actually isn't a bad banjo. The setup on it is just real good. It's, it's you know, as banjos go, if you were learning, this thing would be a really good banjo to learn on. You know, it, it, it's not real heavy like that one is. Just this parts right here, without the rest of it, weigh probably close to as much as this banjo weighs. So I know this aluminum tone ring will improve that. I've taken some rough measurements and just based on my rough measurements, it looks like it's an exact match for the flathead tone ring that's here on this banjo. So I may have to contact the customer and see if we can either work out a trade where I'll take his brass tone ring, which to me is a good trade. I would prefer the brass tone ring. And he take the aluminum one. And if that's what he wants to do, we'll make that happen. Or if he wants to buy this one from me and keep his, well, then we can make that happen too. But I can't give it away because I have to buy a replacement. Well, I talked to the customer on the banjo, and he has agreed to try this aluminum tone ring. He's just going to buy it outright from me. We're not going to trade or anything. He's going to keep his parts original, which I don't blame him for that. And we're going to uh, get started disassembling this and pull the tone ring out. Make sure that it's going to fit the other banjo first, and if it fits, then I'm going to buff and polish it and try to get it as shiny, just like chrome.
for the million dollar question, and I have not checked it yet. Will the aluminum tone ring fit like the brass one? Oh, that's heavy compared to, compared to the aluminum. It's so much lighter. Okay, well, here we go. We're going to find out. It looks like it's going to fit once I get it on there. I think I got it a little bit cockeyed right now. It's so close. <laughs> got it wedged on there at the moment though and I can't get it back off. It's very close. There might just be the slightest bit have to be removed from the inside of this aluminum frame. I don't want to change his wooden structure. We might have to sand this aluminum one just a little bit to get it to go because it's just right there. I mean, it's so close. I can't even tell you how close it is. I bet it's less than 10 thousandths of going from going. I'm going to take this uh, sandpaper here and just clean this inner edge just to make sure there's no burrs or anything sticking out that would cause the problem because it is very close to going. Now let's see if that made any difference. I would say the odds are not that it probably didn't, but we'll try it anyway and see seems to always want to go down on one side faster than the other and then I can't get it lined up. I almost think I can force it. It's very, very close to going. I think I'll do a little more sanding. I think we're going to get there. See if there's any mark thing I can feel on the rim itself. I don't think so. It feels pretty good. Now that one goes right on, so it's just that rim. It's got to be worked on just a little bit. If I had an easy way to chuck this in my lathe, I could easily knock off a thousandth or two here and it would be fine. Wow, it's very, 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 very close, but still no cigar. I'll have to look into seeing if I can chuck this up on my lathe and spin it here and I could cut this off just a tiniest amount. This is obviously not ideal conditions because I've got an air conditioner running right here to my left shoulder and a fan behind me here. It's very hot in the shop in this metal working part of the shop. So you'll just have to bear with me. I have this lightly chucked in here. It actually still wobbles. It's not tight at all. Uh, and when I spin it by hand, I'm just looking at it to see if it's pretty close. And it's really pretty close by eye. So what I'm going to do now is put an indicator on it and get it spinning perfectly or as close to perfect as I can. So we'll put an indicator on it out here. You know, I'm not the end-all, be-all machinist. I just... Uh, do what I do. I've learned it from the seat of my pants, just like everything else that I do. We'll preload the indicator here a little bit, and we'll start spinning it around by hand. Whoops, that didn't help. Okay, well we've got a, a hole there that caught that, in that rim. I'll have to get it over here where it won't catch that hole. There's the low spot. So we want to tighten that or bring it out to me. There's the high spot. So we want to actually we're tightening that in or moving it away from me. And then I have to pull this one out a little bit. And let's just see how far we are off now. Now we're pretty close. I mean, we're within 30 thousandths, maybe 40 thousandths. It's about 40 thousandths off right now. So 
Okay, there's the low spot. So I want to bring that to me. And I'll have to tighten this one in way front that to let this one come a little bit more. Let's just see. We're still at about 40 thousandths. Now we're within 10 thousandths of an inch, 11 thousandths, according to this. There's the high spot, so basically tighten, push this in a little bit and pull this out a little bit. Now yeah, we're within about eight or nine now. We're within about five, six thousandths, looks like. That's pretty good on my equipment because I don't have the best indicator in the world, number one. That's a little bit low, so I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. It's a little low right there in the middle, so I'm going to pull each of these out just a tiny bit. We're within about five thousandths, and I have a feeling that's as good as be as good as we're going to get with this. Being that this is a ring and it's not solid, I think I could warp it if I try too hard. Four thousandths, I would say we are within. Pretty close. That's pretty, getting pretty close. We're under four thousandths now. I'm just checking to see if it's good and tight. It feels pretty tight. We will, of course, be taking very light cuts. Very light cuts. Mainly, we don't need to take much off of here anyway, so when I say a light cut, I really do mean a very light cut. Like a thousandth or two of an inch, and then we'll test fit it. I've ground this down a little bit extra on this boring bar, and that tip there will fit into this slot back in here really good. And it goes all the way back in there now, and so now we need to set this up and uh, take a very light test cut. I don't think you're going to be able to see very much here, um, but anyway, I've got it at the best angle I can. I'm going to, I've already checked for clearance, I've checked for the height of the tool, everything seems to be pretty good. Even with that all said, who knows what's going to happen. So here we go. Let me find my safety glasses. to see what kind of a scratch mark we're making. It's hitting in one spot for the most part, actually two or three spots. I'm not doing too bad. I'm going to make a couple of adjustments. I'm running out of room on my... it would just never fail that that would happen. I'm going to have to move this whole carriage assembly back a little bit. take about a five thousandths cut which would be ten thousandths overall diameter that's not much okay that was a lot of chatter going on there which uh, is just because that's not real solid, but it cut a nice, you know, smooth area around here. I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper and just put on there, and then we'll test fit it. Okay, we're going to just try a test fit here just to see if it even starts in there yet. I think it's going to. It's in almost all the way. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much all the way in there. It just needs a hair, so I think I'm going to sand it now, and then that should be good enough. 
Okay, I spun it around there and sanded it and got all the little burrs off of it and everything. So I think it's going to be just fine right there. So we're going to take it out of there and move back to the desk. Well, I think you can see that it fits up just nice and snug all the way around. Fits the inside just perfectly. So to me, it looks like it's made to fit on there. Now, granted, I ain't got to kid you, I did have to squeeze it pretty tight to get it on there. So getting it back off ain't going to be the easiest thing in the world either. But we can get it off, and uh, it's a nice fit. Now I think I'm just going to, even though you're really not even going to see it hardly at all, it's going to be covered, you know, like this. And so the only thing you're really going to see is this outside edge. I'm going to go ahead and buff it all out and, and try to make it as polished as I can. So we're going to take it back out of here and get started buffing. In my other shop, I had a pretty decent uh, buffing setup. So I've just created this one for this specific project. You can see I've got a real fine wheel, buffing wheel on there. And I've got my compounds in a tray back here all labeled. So I'm ready to go. Uh, not real experienced at which compounds work the best. So I'm going to kind of do a hit and miss thing here. I believe I remember that the white works real good on aluminum, but I don't know that for sure. I may end up changing. We're going to go back to the bench, clean this up, and see where we're at. I know the air is running and it's still noisy, I'm sorry, but it's just the way it is. <clears throat> you can see this is the before shot. Um, it's definitely not uh, shiny, really. It's kind of a dull aluminum color. Well, if the video footage turned out, you just saw me buff this rim. And uh, is it perfect? No, but it's pretty darn good. You know, it's pretty shiny. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Does it look as good as the chrome? Probably not, but uh, you know, it's pretty nice. It's got a little different color. The chrome has got more of a nickel color to it. This has got more of a silver color to it. So, you know, it is what it is, but it looks pretty good. And I think we're gonna go with that. I think I've already videoed this somewhere about the weight of these, but I just, I just for the record, and just to make sure I've got this covered, the aluminum one weighs 15.4 ounces. So, that's less than a pound so it's pretty light the brass one weighs 52.7 ounces which is 3.31 pounds or 3.3 pounds i'm sorry so uh, and in grams just if you're keeping track of grams it's 435 grams versus 1496 grams so <laughs> it's uh roughly one third the weight roughly and uh that, that's much better, uh, much, much better in terms of weight. So the guy should be happy there. It should lighten it up quite a bit. The customer said he wants everything buffed out, so I'll go give this a little bit of buffing. It's a little, I'm a little leery about buffing chrome though, because you can buff through the chrome and then you got the brass showing, so We'll give it a little shot here and see what happens. I've decided to use a little bit of the semi-chrome polish and see if that works, rather than use the buffer. The buffer is gonna get into all, put dirt down in all the joints and everything anyway, so this will, I can keep it a little cleaner this way. And this semi-chrome stuff does a nice job. Yeah, that's looking good already. It does a nice job on stuff like this. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the difference there already, but just in that spot compared to these other spots, it's quite a bit shinier. Um, it gets rid of all the little staining and stuff like that. If uh, whenever you're putting these together, if it if if the neck isn't at the right angle, these will pinch and they're hard to turn. You get the neck at the right angle by holding it with your left hand, and then they're very easy to turn. I'm just going to tighten them by hand right now. 
I was saying that there's a hole in this one that you could use to turn it and tighten it if you need to. There's a hole in this one also, but this one you can also use a wrench down here on this one. So, there, and, and then there's adjustment back here. And you have to be careful about this because you can push this out of round with these adjusters. So you want to try to keep the, uh, the uh, rim round, but yet you want to have the right amount of tension on it too. And it has to be snugged up tight, otherwise all this will rattle. Right now I'm only going to go by hand tight on it. Uh, just because I don't know what else I'm going to run into as we set this up. There's an after and there's a before. You can see how dull it is there. And then it gets real shiny. Real nice. Does a nice job. Now we will line this hoop up with the neck here and we will start putting the tensioners on here and see where we go. There's two school of thoughts on these uh, labels on these heads. One is to put it right here by the neck and you see that a lot. The other is to turn it completely around and put it at the tail and the reason then would be that your uh, tailpiece covers it up you know for the most part and uh, then you just don't see it as much so I don't know which way this customer prefers. It doesn't look like this tailpiece. He's got two tailpieces here. This is a Deering tailpiece. I don't think that's the one that goes with this. I don't know about this one either to be honest though. But I don't think this one's going to cover it entirely and I'm wondering if that just looks worse than, than just letting it show. I think I'm going to let the tailpiece cover up as much of it as I can. It's a 50-50 call. I'm gonna go around and just put up in strategic locations and I'm going to uh, just snug them by hand only, trying to keep everything level. finger snug and after you snug up a bunch of them then some of them will get loose so you go around I'm just checking everything that they're about equal tension and I'm also looking at this around here to see if we're at equal uh, height and it appears that we are it looks real good I also check the height of the head to the rim around here and that looks real good too so you want to keep all that even so now we will get our tool and start tightening everything. That sounds pretty good. I'm gonna check the note that we're at. A lot of guys like to set them to around a B or a B flat, something like that. Appear to be at about an F sharp. I'm going to call it uh, a little bit loose and we're going to go around and do a little bit more tightening. It doesn't take much, believe it or not, to change it a lot at this point. I'm going to try to turn each one about a quarter turn or less. See what that does. It's in the G to G sharp range. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. I'd like to at least get it up to an A. I prefer an A sharp actually, which is a B flat. Much tighter.
We're in the uh, B flat range now. It's in the low or in the high A to the low B flat. I'm just going to tweak it ever so slightly because it's going to stretch. This also allows me to just kind of check that the tension's about the same on all of them. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. And I imagine we're pretty close to a Yeah, we're almost to a B now, so uh, we're between B flat and B. And I'm going to leave it there for right now, and uh, we'll go on from there. Next, we're going to install the brackets that uh, let you screw the uh, banjo to the resonator. We appear to be missing one little bitty screw for this last bracket. I'll have to find one that will match, that will work. Now putting on the tail bracket. Uh, but there does not appear to be a nut for it. Well, that's not good because I don't know that I have one of those. We'll have to look around and see if we can find a nut that will fit this tail bracket. As luck would have it, I found a nut that does seem to fit just fine. It goes on, I can put it on by, with my fingers. It's very tarnished, so I'm going to buff it up a little bit to make it kind of shiny for the rest, to match the rest of the instrument. Here's a look at this nut I found. Pretty tarnished. Give you a, that's a before picture. And hopefully it's going to look better than that when we're done. Looks quite a bit better. I don't know if it shows up very good, but it's quite a bit shinier. Okay, before we go much further, I want to snug all this down, make sure it's good and tight. Gotta get the right wrenches for this. Again, I don't want to change the dynamic of the rim, so I first want to tighten this to here, and I'll tighten that up by doing that. Just good and snug, not crazy. You don't go crazy with it. And then this, uh, I'm loosening this back here a little bit. This, this is still a little, I'm loosening that up a little bit just to make sure that they're not real tight yet. And then I'm gonna put a uh, pin through here to tighten this rod up to the neck again. Again, I'm snugging it up, but I don't want to go crazy with it. That's pretty snug. Now I'll tighten these bolts snug back to the uh, rim, but again, I don't want to force the rim out around. I just want them snug. And now I'll tighten this up to that, and that'll keep the rim where it's at. Got it snugged up pretty good there now. Okay, we're in good shape. Now we're ready to put on the tail piece. And it needs some buffing out too. It's pretty tarnished. This semi-chrome polish, uh, I first heard about it from Randy Schardiger. And uh, it's got a very mild abrasive in it. And it's very fine abrasive. So just rubbing it around on there does polish off any fine scratches and any fine grime that's on there. You, just like any kind of a polish, you want to keep your rag turning so that you're not, you know, to keep a good clean surface going. Now that looks much better. That really looks much better. And we'll clean up the back side here, but I'm not going to really polish that. It's just cleaning it up. It's, it looks pretty good. It didn't get touched as much as the top does, and that's why the top is a more tarnished. All right, we'll go with that for right now. We'll probably have to make some adjustments here in a little bit. The customer wants a fret job too, and we will get to that. 
I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to probably put the strings on it first, work out everything, and get it just to see how much underbow we got. I want to see a lot of things before I actually do a fret job on here. And, and when I say fret job, I don't mean replacing the frets. I mean recrowning and uh, leveling and recrowning and making them look like new. I think you can see that this is pretty tarnished. So we will see what the uh, semi-chrome polish does to that. Once again, I don't want to take it to the buffing wheel because you literally can buff through the chrome in just a matter of seconds. And then you've got brass showing and that doesn't look that good. Uh, this is already wore pretty bad to, to the point where it wouldn't take much to get the brass showing. But this light abrasive polish like this by hand does a real nice job. Makes it look really shiny. That looks much better. I don't know what it looks like on camera, but it sure looks a lot better here. I'm going to go over it one more time just because of this. So it's so soiled on this top part. Well, to my eye, that looks a lot, lot better. I think just for added protection, and I don't know that it'll help much, but I'm going to try a little bit of the Renaissance wax on this piece here. Since it takes most of the abuse, I'm going to put a couple of coats of Renaissance wax on there, and uh, maybe that'll help keep it protected. Well, I don't know if that'll help much or not, but it sure does make it nice and shiny and slick. Once again, it's a judgment call on where to place this armrest. I'm placing it close to the tailpiece. Uh, it really depends on your attack, if you come up higher or lower. And so, I this looks like it would be about the right place to me. And that's where we're putting it. I, I looked uh, online to see where everybody else has theirs. And th most of them are in this spot. A, a few are one one space over this way. So I'm going to go with this. The felt has come loose here where it goes around the neck and I am just using some liquid hide glue to put it back. That's one of the stickier kinds of glues that really work good on fabrics and things. So that's what I'm using. And if it makes a mess you can wash it off real easy so it's not a problem. But it, 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 it tacks up pretty quick and it holds fabric really well. It holds paper and fabric. That's what I use most of the time for those two substances. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the buffer and buff it out too. It looks pretty good already, but I think we can, there's some dull areas and I think we can bring all that out and make it look really nice. decided I was going to go ahead and do a fret leveling on this uh, before I string it up because I'm looking down at it and it looks really good and flat and the angle to the body looks pretty good too so anyway I'm going to go ahead and just do the fret leveling however whenever I laid this on here um, the uh, I noticed that uh, these spikes for the fifth string uh, these fifth string pegs or fifth string spikes, they're high and they're higher than the frets and you can see that this is rattling on there, rocking on there. So I'm going to see what I can do about adjusting those down first. I've got my little tool here and to see they look like they're pretty plenty high, that's for sure. Got a very tiny punch here and I'm going to put that over, well that just went down in there by finger tight so Apparently these are not that tight in the slot. This one is a little tighter apparently. Put a support under there. 
tap it lightly with the hammer. This one's a little tighter, but it goes. This one's pretty loose. And that one that went down by finger also. So some of these are just too loose, in my opinion. Okay, maybe that'll get them low enough to file the frets. Yeah, I don't feel them now. I don't think they're there now. There's a little bit of a high spot right here. Actually, there's actually a little bit of back bow in the neck. I'm going to loosen, check the truss rod just to make sure. I didn't really see that before, but it's definitely there. There is a little bit of an extra back bow and it probably doesn't need all that. Loosen it to see if it goes out Yep, that did it. It's just just that much. It was just a little bit tight. We'll check that again after we string it up to see how level it still is. But right now that's pretty flat. Gibson Master Tone Earl Scruggs Edition. There's a good close-up of the peg head. We've got her all cleaned up, fixed up, polished up, set up. The uh, If I was being critical, if there's anything wrong, if anything's wrong, the action might be a hair low. Um, and I say a hair low, it doesn't buzz. <laughs> A lot of that has to do, I think the neck angle is just about perfect on it. I can't really see bringing the neck angle up to change that. The only way we could change it would be to put a taller bridge on it. And you can buy these bridges in different heights. Uh, you know, he's got, I would say that's a half inch on there. You might want to go to a 916 if they had that. I don't know if they have that or not. The, you know. Drum head's real crisp on it uh, with the uh, tuning it up to about a B flat there or between a B flat and a B. Typically you're better off to tune things that aren't exactly a note on your string. Like a B is a note here, it's the second string. So if you can tune it to like a B flat, then you don't get you don't get that sympathetic overtone um, that you might get otherwise. 
Well, I just couldn't stand it. I, the action being that low, I decided to go ahead and raise it up just a little bit. And I did that by just adjusting the bars that are in there and uh, expanding them out just a little bit at the heel so that the heel gets pushed out just a tiny bit. And I mean, it's, you know, we're just talking a little tiny amount. And that will cock the top of the peg head out this way, which will give you slightly more relief here. And now it's right at 80 thousandths, which is, I, I prefer to see it there rather than the 70. I think that was just a little too low. Now it's just about right. Otherwise, everything's really good. I checked the neck relief. There's just a tiny amount of relief down through it. Um, it's really good. I don't think it could be any better. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you.